was an epic battle. Epic battle. Okay. Anyway, anyway, Dirk, yes. welcome. Yes. Thank you. You too. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Actually, you should say welcome. welcome. Yeah, welcome. Welcome to the amazing Zard experience with Lego Bricks. So, for the people uh, that are now watching, keep in mind while I'm interviewing Dirk, I will not be able to see everything of chat, so I will look at it from time to time. But if I miss your message, just repeat it. Uh, yeah. you, you know the drill, you know the drill. And I can see it anyway because I'm so old I cannot even see that there are letters on that screen. <laughs> now I see there's a letter. It says, uh, send a message. It, and you, that's you want Dirk his shirt, Free J. Oh. Yeah, well, the problem is it gives you free access to this art exhibit. And so maybe after the, sh after the exhibit, so the 23rd hmm. of July. As from then, we might take all orders for T-shirts. Hmm. Good to know. You can actually read that? Yeah, I can read that. Okay, good. You're, you're, you must be really young. Anyway, no you comment. <laughs> See, people, he calls me young. Yes. Keep that in mind for the next time you call me old. Yes. How young are you? Well, no, 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 let's not go there. <laughs> let's not go there. Okay, anyway, first of all, uh, chat, can you all hear both of us clearly? Uh, are we all uh, well understood? Are we all Is the well sound understood? good? Is the sound good, apart from the fact that we're talking? Yeah, okay, that, that's a detail. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, somebody's, something's moving. Sound is good. Okay, good. perfect. Clear, Clear here. here. Yeah. Yes. Okay, Dirk. This is so fun. This is really fun. Okay. Yeah. You've never done this before? I've never done this before. What do you mean? Yeah. You've been interviewed so many times. Yeah, but never never with feedback. Oh! People, you, you never get feedback. I mean, people like, ask me questions and they go like, yes, and now we go to the studio. And then two days later, it's on, it's on TV. But that's not the same thing. This is like the real thing. Yeah, this is life, life with feedback from the people. And Great. also these questions that I have here. So it's, yeah, it's a lot. Okay. But these are from people in chat. So they had the opportunity to punch to uh, ask a bunch of questions. Okay. So let's go over them. Let's Shall go we? over them. Sure. First of all, Dirk, uh, how and when did you get started with Lego? I, so, um, I mean the first time you did Lego. The first time, before the Dark Ages. Um, yes. I started when I was about seven. I mm. had a wonderful granddad who had the fantastic idea of giving me, I guess for my seventh birthday or something, to give me um, a house. A, mm -hmm. a house. Yeah, I still, ha I still have it actually. No. Um, the, the trees are broken, but I still have it mounted. It's so stashed away in a, in a nice cupboard with glass so that I can see it. Uh, that was the first set, and that I mean, I, I was hooked right away. Um, it, ever since, I asked for whenever I could, birthdays, Christmas, yep. whatever, Lego, Lego, Lego. Um, I had a wonderful grandmother, other side, so moms that you know. Yeah. And she gave me a lot of Lego bricks and it just continued, continued. Um, it was that and the Yomaka comic strips, actually. Yeah. That, that was my life when I was a kid. And, but I loved it. And then I went to university because, you know, you have to do that kind of things. And then, well, then you forget because there's other things in life. And then you so get So that's married. when your dark age started. That's, yeah, say. I never considered them dark, actually. I considered them also full of light. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> but, but things brightened up even more when my kid got seven, my daughter, the one who is not watching right now, I think, because one of them actually is watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's the one that told me that you forgot to mention that my my head is in the back of Hagrid's face. Yeah, yeah, she said it uh, in the chat. Oh, she said, oh, yeah, well, that's the one. You did. Oh, yeah, 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 we saw it, we saw it. Well, anyway. Um, so Laura um, got her first set of bricks and then, you know, it was the same story everybody has. Like you go back to your parents, you get the boxes of bricks and you start buying new ones and you build a city and a bigger city and a bigger, bigger, bigger. And then, and then I came with a fantastic idea. Well, why not do something else? Why do something different? So I started doing mosaics. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. That was when people, nobody made a mosaic. Well, apart from you probably, but the rest of the world didn't do that. And that's also when I was um, in, in my comedy shows. I, I yeah, because you, you have had a career as a comedian? I, well, actually, I still do. Oh. Um, but it, it's, it's only for companies these days. Okay. I, I've been in theaters all around Belgium for about 20 years. And then I moved to corporate stuff, you know, management meetings, um, conferences and all of that. And the comedy, it was uh, a mix of, oh, of course, the comedy uh, with the puns and jokes. Yeah. And also a bit of voice acting. I think you yeah, did well, well. I, 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 I still, rarely, but I still do that. So um, the comedy was, I have my own theater show together with my keyboard player because I also sing. Um, and it's a lot about parodies and imitations and all of that, um, you know, also political satire and all that. And then when I go to companies, I do the same thing, but I improvise on company stuff, like mm. HR, like, um, well, it depends. I mean, if they're yeah, having a conference on, on quality, it's, it really depends. That's also why there's so little material on it on the internet, because, because it's always very specific for that company. Yeah. 
Um, and I still do that in combination with the Lego bricks as well, actually, because I also do t team buildings with Lego bricks. I'm also a Lego serious play coach, and I turn that into into uh, team building activities for large groups. Um, I just came back to it. Yeah, that is something company. that also a few people asked about. <laughs> Lego and comedy, I love this guy. See? Yeah. And well, Sanker, hey, welcome. I've, I've got the best professions in the world, actually. I but think. you just said serious play because. Yeah. Uh, most people here in chat and even I, we don't know a lot about serious play because that yeah. is a particular part of Very. Lego yeah. that isn't that well Sorry, known. Sorry, no, sometimes no, no. I have to wave to no, nice no people that I know. That <laughs> no worries. Everybody here is a personal friend of mine anyway, so everybody... Other people see. don't come to this uh, exhibit, of course. Well, they do. I, this is <laughs> this one guy I didn't recognize. Really? Uh, yeah, but then it appeared he was my tax controller. So. Oh, okay, okay. Anyway, <laughs> you were asking about Lego serious yeah. play. Can you tell us a bit more about what is that actually serious play? Well. Well, a few, they found out, Lego found out, I think Robert Rasmussen, the guy that trained me, found out that um, you, have, you have these brainstorming sessions with companies where they, you know, you have like you three people at a table, mm -hmm. we're going to brainstorm about a problem. And, you know, George here would say something and then I would probably say, I agree with George. And then you might say, I don't. And then you two have a discussion and I'm sitting there. Mm -hmm. And then, then well, and if you have eight people around the table, it's the same thing. It will be you and George discussing and the rest will be falling asleep. Yes. So that's one problem you have with traditional brainstorming sessions. The second problem is that you, you, it's talking. You fall asleep when you listen to somebody, when you don't do well. Not People here. don't fall asleep. Not here, please. but usually in a, in, a, in a business environment, when you're sitting at a table for your seventh yeah, meeting know. a day, you just fall asleep. I actually have that problem a yeah. lot of times well, in my actual work. So, so then they discover that if you do something with your hands, if you, for instance, they have these, you have the same thing with clay. People mm -hmm. have to improvise, build stuff with clay, um, you are more, fo more focused. I always compare it when you have to mow your lawn or if you have to paint your wall, you stop thinking about five things at the same time. You just focus on one thing being painting that wall and then that other thing and that other thing surfaces and it's like in the front of your mind that that's what you th are thinking about when you're, while you're painting. Mm. So taking all of that and putting it into an exercise of Lego breaks is, is very helpful in making this kind of brainstorm sessions way, way more productive. So that's also what I do on these trainings. I have a bunch of people and I have a subject and I ask them to use the bricks to build whatever is on their mind. And you don't have this problem of only George and you talking because everybody has to build something and everybody is asked for what have you built and so why. So that way you get input from everybody. So you everybody. have input from everybody. And the second thing is that because you're doing this with Lego bricks, you're, you, you, it's, it's something you have to experience. But when you are building something, you don't know in advance what you're going to build. No. I ask them to just build like, um, build like a how to improve this company. I mean, after a few other exercises, but how to improve this company. Mm. And people just go, well, how? Well, as it, start building. They start building, and the thing that is somewhere in their subconsciousness just surfaces, and it, 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 it gets there. I mean, at a certain It doesn't really matter what they're building, it just a, it's help, a, a helpful it helps, tool. It's a helpful to tool. It's, it's a tool. It's, it, that's perfect. It's a tool. It's a tool. And I didn't believe it at first myself. Because, but then this, at this training session, Robert says, and now you have to build a value that you add to the team. As a, how abstract can you get? And I just started building something and I built a staircase. I don't know why, I just built a staircase and I made it like in two or three shades of red. And then he asked, so what have you built? And I said, well, yeah, it's kind of me. It's kind of the artistic part because it's all reds. It's just not random. It's, it's, it looks nice. And it's a staircase because I have ambition and, and I like that things go up and all of that. So, so yeah, mm, and, and cool. it just surfaces. Well, and, and of course it goes way further than that, but for this introductory okay, session, session, it's okay. With the serious play, is that tied to the fact that you are certified like a professional or is that no, separate? It's, it's, well, no, I, I think so far I'm the only one who combines both. Oh, okay. Um, but that's also because of, I have this history of performing for companies. I know the company environment very well. I mean, I graduated as an engineer. I, I, I've been there. I've done that. And adding this serious play to, to the rest of my activities just makes the picture complete. I think it started when Roche Diagnostics in, um, in Switzerland, they invited me to do, for the launch of a new product, to do something with comedy and something with Lego together. And, and I, I didn't even know myself that the mix was possible. Hmm. But then we, I went there for, for just to talk about the event and what could we do. And then they said, well, we want you to be the master of ceremony and add some fun stuff 
during the day. But then I say, we also would like you to do something with Lego, like build a miniature version of, of the machine that they were going to launch. And, and then maybe do something else with the bricks. And then we came up with the team building activity. And then, but that was before I had, had this, 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 oh. this, this title or, or certificate. And, or, and that's when I thought, well, maybe I should professionalize this so that I can really know what I'm talking about. Yep. I mean, it's, it's one thing to take a bunch of bricks and go to people and say, hey, you can do something with this or know what you're doing. And, well, we're called amazing, so we want to do amazing stuff. Yeah. So it has to be founded. It has to be well yeah. thought through. So um, about the other part. So the Lego certified professional. Yeah. When did you become a Lego certified professional? I, I thought it was 10 years ago, but it's nine and a half years ago. Nine and a half. Because okay. when, when we have a, with, with all LCPs, we have an annual sort of get together in Billund, usually Billund. And um, I was ready for them to celebrate my 10th anniversary. I was hoping that I would get a piece of cake or something <laughs> and uh, then they looked it up for me and it was only nine years so it was somebody else who got celebrated which, which which is fine I mean I love them all uh, but still <laughs> but still <laughs> so so then uh, next time I um, I'm now really hopeful Tanya so, uh, Tanya I hope you're watching this uh, <laughs> and I hope this meeting will be in Australia instead of Billund um, <laughs> and I will get a kangaroo cake or whatever just to celebrate my 10th anniversary in the program oh, awesome okay but okay so 10 years huh? yeah we, we go for 10 years okay we go whatever. for 10 years good but you've been professionally busy with Lego and everything longer than that yeah well it was it was I think I started to professionalize when I got when I became an LCP. Oh, okay. So I, before I was then doing, it was not really. Well, yeah, I did make some money on the side, but my back then my main profession was being a comedian, and then I would take on jobs whenever they came along. Okay. I was not really promoting that a lot. Of course, I was promoting that, but but not like okay, this is my business. But then ten years ago, becoming an LCP, seeing what the other LCPs already achieved. I mean, my my heads existed. For, I started doing that twenty years ago. That was before any of the other LCPs even started. I think I think Sean Kenny might have been already doing some doing stuff. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Well, but but still, it was like I was there doing professional stuff without being professional. Exactly. And then I saw what the others had achieved in the meantime, and I thought, wow, this is this is a neat way to to have a business and, and combine business with pleasure. So yeah. Hanging on that, at what point did you decide? Yes, I want to be a certified professional. Yes, I want to do this. Well, I want to be a certified professional was not uh, an I wanted. It was, I, I <laughs> this is a funny story. You are going to hate this part. You really, you're uh -oh. going to hate this. So when I, when I um, built that head of Willem Vermandere that mm -hmm. you saw, the first one w w that I integrated in my theater show, um, I, at that time, I went to Lego and asked for the bricks to build it. And they said so we project get project support. Yeah, yeah well, b b before it even existed. Yeah, okay. I mean, we're talking 20 years ago. It's it's be before Dark Ages. This is like the Stone Age. Um, well, the Brick Age. Uh, anyway, yeah, Brick Age. Anyway, um, so back then they said we get like a, only in Belgium we get like a hundred questions like this a year, and we grant one, and we'll do yours. Probably because I was relatively famous then. So I got those bricks for free. Guess, guess that a, a, an entire K8 cardboard free box. Free bricks. Free bricks. They sponsored me, for God's sake. Free bricks. Yeah, 20 years ago. And then I did a second project, and I got a pallet full of bricks for free. Uh, Lego. Yeah. I built a lot of things also. Okay. Again, 20 Hello. years ago. 20 years ago. <laughs> and then there was a smart guy at Lego saying, "Well, probably, probably it went that way, but they never told me." It was like. These guys getting his bricks for free, but there's a thing called Lego Certified Professionals. Why doesn't he become a Lego Certified Professional so we don't have to sponsor the bricks anymore? He can pay for them. <laughs> and I was so blinded by the idea of becoming like the seventh LCP in the world. Oh, you were only that. Were I was only number six. I would, at that time, I were only six, so I would be number seven. Did they? They forgot to mention that together with me, they they accepted two others. So it was seven, eight, or nine. Well, anyway, seven, anyway seven. Uh, within the first ten, <laughs> and uh, and I kind of forgot the detail where they said, and now you have to pay for the bricks. Um, so if you pay for the bricks, you actually also want to make some money, right? And that's also that's actually people mistake that a lot. But the word professional is not that you're so good. Of course, you have to be good, 
but it's also it has to be our business exactly and so because that was a question that i just saw in chat also what exactly is a lego certified professional yeah well the terms are it's, it's, uh, it's uh, let's let's put it this way you have to honor a few criteria of course Th that book no, uh, no. The book is the, the, the book you're referring to is a contract. Okay. The contract is big, and I am not allowed to talk about the contract. I cannot even f talk about the fact that I'm not to to allowed to talk about the contract. Oops. Yeah. Sorry. So I breached it already. We'll, we'll, we'll cut that out. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. It's only live, but. Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> Oops. We cut live. It's what they did with Janet Jackson. No, it's a different story. <laughs> anyway. Um, so you, what you have, what you do has to be professional. The quality of your work has to be. Okay, well, more than okay, but that, I mean, I think that thousands of people, thousands of you are doing that. Secondly, it has to be a business. Many people don't want to do this professionally to gain money because that puts pressure on you. It puts mm. pressure on the fact that I have seven, well, six employees, we're seven. Six, so, or, uh, six or seven? Yeah, so, so mm. that means that at the end of the month, all these bills have to be paid and the wages have to be paid. That means that it puts a lot of stress on you. That means that sometimes you have to finish a job which as a as a fan you would not finish yet I mean, you, you don't do this don't look at the hand of mr clooney here i hate the fact that i had to rush things it doesn't look way as good as it should and as i could but there was no time and no time no budgets so that's that's the limitation that you have being a professional um so that's the second it has to be a business the third is you have to to honor the lego values which is very hard to determine. I mean, what are Lego values? It's about creativity, child uh -huh. friendliness and all that. And of course, of course we honor that. Everybody honors that. But then you are not allowed to uh, build politics. You, I cannot build, even if I wanted to, Donald Trump uh, or what Barack the, Obama. The pro well, I built that before I was a Lego certified professional. Ah, I am, okay. It's not forbidden to show what you have done before. Okay, got it. Uh, but you will see that there are no recent politicians no, in the exhibit. And it's because it's not allowed. And politics is probably even debatable. Lego does not want... want the, to, Discussion. To, well, they, they don't want to... to, 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 um, to they don't want us to, to, have, to, to take a standpoint or something. Uh, and which is which which I totally understand. So no religion, no sex. Well, sex was not on the list actually in the, in the beginning. But they, we can confirm that sex is not allowed. It's not allowed. It's not totally another totally, story. Totally, it's, totally, it's, it's, totally it's not, not appropriate totally for the stream. But so, um, so and, and above on top of that, again, it's in the contract. We cannot mention it. But there are a lot of things that we cannot do. Um, so, on the one hand, you get this nice title. And, and a few advantages like having to travel to Billund every year. On the other hand, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of limitations to what you can do and what you're allowed to do. And you have to be willing to live by that. And what is some rule, because we're not going to talk about all the rules and everything, but what is one rule where you say, I wish I didn't have to follow that specific rule? One that limits your creativity the most? Well, I, I, think, I think that is in, I mean, as a comedian, I've been living on satire for ages. Mm -hmm. um, I like to comment on stuff, th stuff that I don't think is right in the world and I want to improve that. But because of the no politics rule, I'm not allowed to put that into my, leg sorry, in my Lego work. And it's a pity. So that's one. But you can still do it in your comedy shows if you do a comedy. Yes, I can. Be okay. Because because. So the, it's not completely. No, they, they don't ban my life outside of Lego. I can still marry my wife, which I did. Really? Yes, and which I'm still You didn't very have to sign for. a waiver for that? No, but actually I married her before I became a Lego certified professional. Ah. And actually she's also part of the business. So maybe, anyway, I'm happily married and that has to stay that way. Give me one sec. I'm going to move my backpack. Sure. He's moving his backpack, just filling the gap right now. He's moving that very graciously. You can actually see that he has moved his backpack like a few times before already in his life. But the way he does that makes him like the person he is and whom, whom he has big... Stop smiling! Yeah, it, his smile is freaking me out. Yeah, well... Can't wait to meet the guy in person, actually. You haven't met uh, Kuhn in person? No, have you? Actually, yes. Oh, great! From a distance. From a distance, yeah. <laughs> in Hollywood. At one point. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. All right. 
So yeah, uh, with LSP, but do you have any advice for people that are considering to become one of the elusive LEGO certified professionals? Because well, at the moment there are 13 or 14? Or well, there are 19 now. 19 uh, already? Yeah, a few. I missed a few. A few, few were added in China because it's a booming market. Ah, okay. Yeah. So first advice, move to the right country. Because chances are that if you're living in Germany, there's already Rene there. You're not going to become a LEGO certified professional. Um, we'll say most, most of Europe actually is covered. So if you're from Europe, move to Africa would be a good point or South America. Actually, South America would be your best bet because they have a market there, Lego, and they would probably be very interested in having somebody in that part of the world to be an LCP. I should, I should tell uh, Jill that. Uh, people remind me to tell Jill that he should become an LCP. Uh, I mean, yeah. he's perfect for that. Yeah. Because he has the talent. Okay. Entonces, Jill, tienes que hacerlo. He probably knows what that means. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I only speak four languages, unfortunately. And no Spanish. Uh, there is a, a little bit. Dutch, Limburgs, German, English, right? No, no. Uh, French, German. Okay, English. okay, French. I forgot about French. Yeah. You should not mention French today. It's about. Yeah, I know that's. Oh, it's well, let's forget about that. Come on, let's move to interesting yeah, stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Um, which build that you've done over the years are you the proudest of? Oh, that's a tough one. I know. That's yeah. why I'm asking. Yeah. Um, never ask that again. Um, uh, um, <laughs> well, there are a few, but you know, part of this, this exhibit, I am really fond of the Marilyn Monroe that turns from Kennedy to Sinatra to Yul Brenner to who's the fourth? Yul Brenner. Marlon Brando. Yeah, Marlon Brando. Um, I, I had this idea ages ago about Marilyn Monroe turning, around, turning from one lover to the other. Then I looked her up and she had 26 celebrity lovers in her life so she's been quite busy she was girl. busy she was busy and uh, i actually wanted to do the same thing with somebody who's more from today and i couldn't find anybody with that success rate uh, <laughs> well, anyway uh, but it, it was a, it was a tough tough piece of work to realize i mean sometimes it's a nice idea but then it's pretty easy to realize I mean, everybody loves the Rubens. I love the Rubens, but it's not that difficult. It's, it was, it's, what, it's, it's, it's a great thing and it's a great achievement, but it's not very hard to build. But this Marilyn Monroe mean. was, she, it took us three years um, because between the idea and finishing it, it was like, okay, how are we going to do the mosaics? Because we have to leave out the white, but then how well are we going to support these tiny stripes yeah. in the mouth? And that's because it's, be it's between plexi, plexi and plexiglass. Uh, so, but, but before we, I mean, now it's easy. Now I once, can, once you know now, it. Once you know it's easy. Um, but you don't easily glue Lego to plexiglass, for instance. Um, so that, that was one thing. Uh, and then, then just building the Marilyn Monroe was also really, I mean, at a certain point, I said to my first coworker, Stefan De Vos, Stefan, I hope you're watching. Great uh, guy. He was watching really, before. So. Really, really funny guy. Anyway, he, he was kind of saying he had built something in the beginning and then he said, now I want something more difficult. And he wanted, and he I said, well, do the Marilyn Monroe. And I said, yeah, great. And he built one leg and then said, oh, yeah, I have other things to do. So there we were with uh, one leg Marilyn Monroe. It's a great, <laughs> a great, fantastic leg, but it's just the leg. Oh, so yeah. then a few months later, I started doing the other leg and then I started the skirt. And the skirt was not, a, not too bad, but it was tough it's to really build. It's really nice, actually. It does very nice yeah, flow in it. I know, I know. I mean, and, and hurdles like that came up all the time and, and it took us ages. But now, finally, it's there and finally I'm happy. We built four heads, four versions of the head before something more or less looking like a woman and not like a brick head's head. Yeah, but it, it was a very good. I mean, we saw it earlier today and I was absolutely blown away. Yeah, I love The problem one. is there's no way to catch that thing. You have to see it in live. There's a lot of things here. People tell me, mm. I've taken a picture and it's going to be a souvenir. But no. I, when, when I show it to friends, it's like... It's not the same. It's, it's not just not the same. I know. Uh, um, and especially with the Marilyn Monroe. because I already so heard from several people in chat that they're going to come. So good. Good. Yeah. good. But you have only one, one week and a half left, so are we over? There's an airport, right? If you have a private jet, there's an airport, right? <laughs> right, five kilometers from here. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, so uh, you also design sets. Uh, so small sets for yeah. companies, the fire department we saw earlier. Yeah. 
uh, something for a hospital and so on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's always an uh, order from a, from a company or an organization. Well, ex ex except for our own, the, the, the one that we did for uh, for this experience. Yeah, uh, okay, that one. That, that's, that that's one is, uh, is just for this occasion. Um, mm -hmm. But it's always for companies, uh, which is on purpose because of the contract that I cannot mention and also because of the attitude that I have myself. We are not competition for LEGO, for the LEGO company. So we only do stuff is that... Is that the reason that you only can make a certain amount? Yes, exactly. But I am not allowed to talk about the amount. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot I cannot talk about. Um, this, this is worse than, okay, than we'll, positions. We'll, but yeah, anyway, we'll, but, we'll but, skip but, over those then. <laughs> no, but what I want to say is, is that it's clear that a LEGO certified professional is there to fill the gaps where LEGO, the company, does not want or cannot go. So if we design a set, it's because LEGO would not do it. But we want to help out these people. Of course, we want to make money. But we, if some company, or take the MRI set, the set that we designed for radiology, where we tell, where it is explained to children what there is going to happen when they have this MRI scan. It's something that, well, it's, we're talking about 200 copies or something, 300 maybe, worldwide. It's not something that a Lego company can do or wants to do. It's more, they want to do it, but it's just... It, it's not, for a specific audience It's not well. worth the investment. Financially, it's crazy. But for yeah. us, it's worth the while. And we, we help these radiologists worldwide to achieve what they want to achieve. Yeah. So that's exactly where an LCP is, is perfect for the job. Mm. And, and that's... Same with the Ronald McDonald project, where, where the, the keeping families close yeah. box. There's the fun. Hi, <laughs> Stefan. So, so it's, it's the same thing we're doing is on a very limited scale to support this new house being built at, at the campus of the, of, the, of the University Hospital in Yette, mm -hmm. to support that project when it's going to be, with a, they, built, they had the first stone. Or, so, so it's very limited. It's something that Lego could never do. But it helps out these kids later, and that, that's, that's the goal. For the kids, people. We do all sorts of crazy things for the kids. Well, uh, sometimes for adults as well, yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, me, we did a uh, fundraiser just a while ago. Mm -hmm. and, okay, it was not that big of a deal, but uh, we managed to raise $1,200. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I was happy with it. I only had to eat half a bottle of Tabasco for it, so. Well, next time, for the kids. make a different, yeah, eat something else. Yeah, yeah even yeah. hotter, probably. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go for chocolate, for instance. Like, mm. hey, no, mm. Let's go, chocolate. Why, do you, why the hell don't, don't you drink chocolate? Yeah, including. Anyway. And, um, now, a few questions about the actual building of, for instance, George Clooney, of the other models that you make. Because there were a lot of questions about that. For instance, uh, do you use digital programs when designing, or is it just you start building? It depends. It depends a lot on, on, on the, the, um, the bills at hand. Um, where do I start? When we do architecture models, what LEGO is most used for still, um, then we just have the building plans and pictures and it's more or less def deciding this is going to be the size, you know, that in reality a window is two meters wide, so that will be four studs and that's it. It's pretty, pretty, you know, Okay, so with architecture, it's more like you say, this is, will be the scale, and then yeah, exactly. you just start building and try yeah. to find the correct pieces. Exactly, and actually the same is true for the faces that I build um, for everything which requires some form of detail. Uh, mosaics, well, you all know there's a lot of freeware out there. Um, usually it's a combination in our case of, well, most important thing, the right idea. It's, it's, and, then, and then translate that into first, usually via Photoshop, and, and mess it up, sorry, mess a lot with, with, the, with the picture uh, until we have results, or I or we, uh, that we then either straight out of Photoshop build or sometimes not even using Photoshop, sometimes it's just a picture that we lay there and then start building. And start building, like the, the dolphins that, yeah. that were there. It was, um, it, it was at a point where where there was no other way because of the, the weird colors that were used and there was no software that would generate those colors not even a feel for those colors so we just did it by hand like okay here green more green okay let's put this green and here less well blue more blue well blue and and build it, sorry build it like that oops <laughs> because why am i also asking because for instance with a, a thing like george clooney or so because normally these are glued the, well they are yeah okay they are so but then you have to know 
the end result before you can glue. Or no, well, yeah, or you have to be extremely good. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> now the, the 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 body of Mr. Clooney is um, is generated with a computer. Um, it's we have we work together with a guy called Pet Arden. He's an awesome guy, and he is a good, very good 3D modeler. I mean, software. You know, one of these Rhino, Maya, whatever things that he uses. And we then run that model through a piece of software, which is very secret, which is in the contract, which is called Brick Builder, and that's about it. All you can know about it. It's but it's it's owned by by Lego, and as ah, okay. and as an LCP, we have access to that, um, and it gives you the contours of what you want to build. So it it slices the space up in in, in slices. And it tells you. I've, I've seen screenshots of. Yeah, that exactly. Software. It's, yeah, and, and I know people that have developed similar software themselves. So it's it's not that impossible. But actually, what you do is you digitalize you digitalize the three D space. You say if you want to build this table and you, you run it through that piece of software, this table will say okay, the the, the world, the space is uh, divided into little cubes. Mm -hmm. And either there is matter in this cube or there isn't. If there isn't, then there is no Lego brick. If there is, to some extent, matter, then there is a, a, a Lego brick. Okay. A one by one. And it just gives you contours of one by ones. And then all the rest you have to do yourself. So, yeah, for the people uh, that were wondering, he uses software, we cannot get it. No, you can't get it. <laughs> no, you can't. It took us as LP, LCPs ages to get it. So uh, Yeah, and that's why I say we cannot get it. No, but there is there are similar things on the market. Um, I know that Robin in Canada, the LCP in Canada, you does, did well. I don't know what he does now, but he used to use something which is similar, but not Lego related. It's sort of a, a mosaic generator for 3D or something. So there is software out there that can help you do that. But again, it's 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 a method. It, it's a way to achieve what you want to build. But the trick is in is first to do what you want to build, and, and that I think. That's the trick question. What is it you want to build, and how you do it? Yeah, well, it's um, and, and a b bit of skill. a different question. Uh, do you prefer order and symmetry or chaos and clutter? Oh boy. Uh, well, I think I guess in my case, I'm still a little more towards order and symmetry. Ah. Um, but I want to give it a twist. So, so you would in most of the things you see that we build here. It's like it looks nice. It of looks course. symmetrical. It, well, symmetrical to a certain extent. It, it it does not look like chaos. And then there is this one thing somewhere, either content-wise or literally something somewhere where you go like, what's that? I mean, the light tower in the Matterhorn. Mm -hmm. There should not be a light tower in the middle of the Alps. No. No. So the thing looks nice. It looks symmetric. It looks per per perfect composition, nice colors and all of that. But this light tower is the thing that it's out of place. There's always something out of place. This guy here is not drinking coffee. He's drinking tea. So all the rest is like the way I suppose Clooney would. Well, apart from the bad hand, um, <laughs> we don't talk about that. Uh, is 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 the way he should look. But then there's this one thing. It's not coffee. Especially not the big head which we have in the front. Yeah, there, there he is. Tea. It's tea. Yeah, that was lovely. It's it's tea. And, uh, so, so from the outside. Yeah, with this Clooney, I have one question. That brown rig over there. What's doing that there? What, why is that there? That's a very good question. I think. Oh, it, it's, it was. I think it's somebody, somebody who wanted to be creative. Sorry. At some point, so probably they took it from from that house where you have a lot of these brown. Okay, that, so that's not supposed to be there. That makes sense. Okay, that that makes sense. <laughs> it's not supposed to be. There. Uh, then uh, some of the basic questions that everybody asks probably. Do I ever eat Lego bricks? I do in my dreams. I have this dream, recurring really? dream, where you have the one by one by two by two corner bricks. Yeah. In this uh, reddish brown color, one nine two. Uh, well, in Lego, it, uh, with Lego, it's one nine two, and I I eat them and they taste like like Belgian chocolates. I I don't know. Well, it's 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 a probably a deviation of some sort, but I. Yeah, that wasn't oopsie. I know I know people that wasn't oopsie. Yeah. See that I that's the emote that I mean that they have for me. That's an oopsie emote. An oopsie emote. Because yeah. I drop Lego all the time. Okay. 
That's why I'm not touching anything here because the Let's dangerous. not touch anything here. <laughs> ah! I love the sound of that. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, now I'm doing the same thing. I'm <laughs> sorry, folks. Oh, don't worry. Go ahead. Um. Yeah. Oh, actually. Sorry, it's really. I'm really. You being could in. always ask the wind person to make some Lego bricks. And I met. Bricks. I met the guy actually when I was doing a comedy thing. He was one of the keynote speakers, and I was giving comments on his show afterwards. Um. So that might that might be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But there's a problem. Well, that's one of those things. We cannot do stuff that is related to 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 chocolate. I know that Lego Belgium at a certain point they gave as as a gift to their relations they gave um, Belgian chocolates in the shape of Lego bricks, yeah. and then corporate said that they could not do that anymore because chocolate is not healthy food, and if it's not healthy food, Lego does not want to be dark chocolate is very healthy. Well, I agree, I agree, but <laughs> what do they know? What maybe. They know? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was just a Danish thing. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. so so it's yeah, that's true. In Lego, in uh, Denmark, like, they are very focused on healthy food and everything. Yeah, but so am I. But anyway, um, it would be fun to build to do that. The Lego chocolate house. Mm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, then the classic question, of course. Uh, well, you have your own personal Lego collection, I guess. So besides, I do, but it's not big. No. No, it's not. It's uh, no. I uh, I I have the the first modulars um, because I just love them. When when I saw that the first time, I thought, oh, this is neat. This is this is like Lego City, but like ten times up. Um, and then there came too many, and I just stopped collecting them. But because my shelf was full. Yeah, and, that, and that I, that's I, a problem that a lot of people know. Yeah. Yeah. So I I think I have like up until the last three or something, I have them all. But three of them are still in the box because there's no place on the shelf, and, uh, and that's where it ends. And so you still buy Lego sets? Really, not a lot. When I buy them, I usually buy them to give to friends or people oh, okay. that work with me. Or I know one of our coworkers is really—I mean, he's just—we're not going to mention him, but he's called Bjorn. And he's awesome, <laughs> and he has his kids with him. And then sometimes he goes he's like, "He's very good at cleaning plexiglass." That too, yeah. Well, that's not why I think he's awesome. Um, so, so, uh, so then I would kind of, well, you know, it's Christmas and here's a box for the kids for yourself. And, but for myself, I hardly buy any. I did buy the Harry Potter things because I did the voice and I have something with the Harry Potter series or, or movies. Uh, so when there's something personal, then I would never say no to a box that Jamie Barrar gives to me and signs. And of course, I'm going to treasure that. For the people wondering, Jamie is uh, one of the more notorious, famous Lego designers. Yeah. Uh, he's quite famous. Yeah, and really nice. I mean, yeah, he's really yeah. nice I met guy. him last year in Scarbeck. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. Great person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Always friendly. It's, it's I don't know how he does it. I mean, he must yeah. take pills or something. I mean, I, I'm usually like, you would hate me if there was no camera. And, <laughs> and Jamie is just the opposite. I don't know. Probably it's because he's American. That helps. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Uh, so, but then in your company, yeah. Uh, so I guess you have warehouse. Amazings. Amazings. Check it out. www.amazings.eu. Yeah. I guess you have warehouse where no. you do your builds now. Where? Well, we for the big stuff that yeah. is surrounding us, we went to uh, a place called De Brug, De Brug in Morsel. Um, really, they had some space left, and we do a lot of work with them. I mean, all the metal that is inside our models is being done there as well. That there when we need well, I, everything that is not lego actually it's mostly is done there and so we have very good relationship with those people oh, okay. and they were kind enough to just make some space available for us uh, one small detail we were on the first floor it was really hot a couple of last months so we kind of melted um, some of the lego bricks almost melted and also because we're on the first floor everything has to be be transported via a small lift Oh, a big lift, but still, uh, we the first one of the houses here in the back was designed to be. To, it's in modules, but the biggest module would be about three meters long, which was too long for that elevator. So that's why we, why one of these houses is shorter than we actually designed it Oops. at first. 
And that's the kind of stuff you don't think about when you start dreaming about making a plaza or a lot of Lego bricks. But that's what that's the kind of stuff that happens. Well, talking about dreaming, how, when did you get first time get the idea to do an exhibition like this? Well, how, how I, did that form? The, the idea to do an exhibition existed from the very start. When I built my first heads, I I wanted them to be on exhibit. You do this. You do, you, I mean, I'm an artist. Okay, so I have a big ego. Ego and Lego, it's kind of just the L is different. So, so I, I want recognition. Uh, I'm, it's not a nice thing to say, but um, it's a fact. So, so you want to no, show, I mean, show what you do. And especially if people say, this is nice, you should show it to people. Then you go like, okay, you're confirmed in your, this, what I do is nice. So you want to show it to more people. And at first my heads were on exhibit in shopping malls. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, that's fine. But, but they're in a shopping mall. You, you miss the art part and then I have these friends in Slovakia from Emotion and they also put my stuff out in, in, exhib in shopping malls all over Central and Northern Europe today which is nice especially if they invite me over to open the exhibit that's fantastic because then I get to travel and I love to travel um, but but again they're not in an art environment so I was thinking about what, why, why can't we do something? So I, I looked for venues. I asked people, won't you rent this stuff? But just mounting the Rubens costs 2,000 euros Be because you need a truck, because you need trusses, you need, stu you, you need stuff. And, and, and you know, we're in Belgium, people are expensive. So 2,000 euros, so it was too expensive for people to just, just hire the thing. Mm -hmm. So then at a certain point, uh, I, was talking to, I, I was talking to people and they all said, well, then just do it. Just you know, find, a nice, find a nice space and, and, and just do what is in your head. And that was a year ago, a little more than a year ago. And then, okay, I said, well, let's first see if I can, if nobody shows up, if I can afford this. And if I can, let's just do this. And so um, we started working on it in the last six months. It was just only this and we can barely afford it, but it's there. And so far, everybody loves it. So great. I'm not going to say what I think about it. Don't. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> I love it as well. Detail. Detail. Um, of course, a question that probably everybody has already asked. How many bricks do you think that are here in this exhibition? Yeah, we knew that this question was going to pop up. Absolutely. So, um, so we did the math. We, of oh, course, I thought you were counting all of them. Well, we are, we are hiring somebody to do that for us. But we're pretty sure that they'll end up at around 5 million bricks. Give or take a few hundred thousand. Um, it's, 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 yeah. I think this plaza alone is about between 1.5 million and 2 million. Because there's very little Duplo involved, actually. We should have used more Duplo. Then, but then again, then again, mm. yeah. Uh, a very interesting question. Can you do the Voldemort voice? <laughs> not in, not in, not in English. No, yeah, but don't go in Dutch. Uh, the, go in Dutch the Dutch go in version Dutch. would sound like Harry. It's just my voice here. Um, Harry, Harry. Well, what, what did I say? Like Voldemort? Uh, that's the bad. That's the bad thing. I mean, you do that once. And then, and then everybody has, who has seen the movies 10 times, they go like, yeah, well, you've, you said that and that. I, I'm better at Hagrid because people ask that all the time. Okay, Hagrid, Hagrid, Hagrid would be, you bent in tov now, Harry. Katanimosa. 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 <laughs> whereas, whereas Voldemort was very close to, to my own voice. And then they asked me to do Sirius Black as well. Oh. So at a certain point, I almost killed myself. Well, and and I, I got to do Voldemort because no other actor in the first movie there's only one part there's only one sentence that Voldemort says it's like Harry Potter that's all that's when he's, he's the snake and yeah. that's what he says and in the extras on the DVD he says like one more sentence and nobody no actor wants to do that because when you whisper it's bad for your voice that's what they oh so they asked me, do you want to do it? I said, well, well why not? I mean, just one sentence. <laughs> okay, here, right? let's go for it. So I did that one sentence. But then Warner, of course, for the next movie, they said, we need the same actor for Voldemort. So I was Voldemort and Hagrid all, all of a sudden. And then I think in the third movie, Sirius Black appears. And then it was the casting agency that said, well, do you have the perfect voice for that? I said, but I'm already two of them. I said, well, don't worry. 
just try and well I tried and I got accepted and so it was me like doing three parts in one movie which was kind of crazy yeah I can imagine because yeah well you don't you 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 first do all Hagrid's then ah, okay. you do all Voldemort's and then you do all Sirius Black's and when you count the number of of, um, of sentences that you do it's really not that much I mean, it's, it's not because, like in the last movies, Hagrid, maybe he's in, on the, on, in, in the screen a lot, but he doesn't say a lot. So, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm Hagrid, yeah, but if you would do all films in, in like one take, or one, I think in one day, everything that I did in the Harry Potter movies would be on tape. Well, take two days, because Hagrid in the first movie was a lot, but after okay. that. Okay, back to Lego for a minute. Oh yeah, Lego. Yeah, yeah. yeah Apparently, there's something going on here about Lego. Piece of plastic. Uh, loves. Yeah. An interesting question here. Is there a piece in the Lego catalog that is still missing? Missing? Oh yeah. Where, where you oh, say? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a piece. If I had that, I could do so much. Oh with yeah, it. there is the one that would have like it should be two plates, two plates um, thick. Yeah. It should have a hole on the bottom, and a hole on the top. So that when you start building and then you put down that one, then you can continue this way. And then, you, and then I need the opposite as well. Because when I do the mouth, I, it's, there is no inverted cheese slope. There is no inverted cheese slope. So I have to kind of, there's a whole mechanism inside just to make it work. Yeah, to switch it over. Which is, well, it's, it's fun but it would save me a lot of time if I had those two. And actually, they more or less exist today because there is this the round two, two by two round one with a hole. So that one... And the one with... Exactly. With the those, those are really useful. And that works in the hole direction. But then the other one is not there yet. So if Jamie and or anybody else is uh, watching this, you would do me a great favor and please uh, make it straight you, away. You would do everybody a great favor. Brick yellow and white, please. This is called brick yellow, by the way, yeah. it, with Lego. It's a, some, it's, the fans call it tan and I call it sand, but it, Lego, it's zero five brick yellow. Um, I know the Lego colors as well. Yeah. And actually, there is a system behind the Lego colors, so. There is? Yeah. Yeah, Tell me the, the medium, the dark, and the oh yeah, 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 that's yeah. The, pa the pattern colors. Yeah, yeah. That Depending on that, you also have a medium uh, sand. What was? It? Yeah, yeah. The, the a old parts in the color name have a certain relation to the color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know. Yeah, but still, sometimes it's very hard to find. No. You want to come? In? Oh yeah, sure. I, I'm sorry, folks. We have a very nice guy here who who needs me for a second. Yeah, and go ahead, I'm, go ahead. No, just have a seat. Mother Kaka, what in Netherlands? Mobile, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, what are you doing? Are you in Bosch or Chinese? Yeah. Are you still? Uh, in the cast. Yeah, I'm still there. It's um, Tulin who's there. So we're just, you know, the Hall of Fame. And this woman, this there's a lady here that I know actually. You know, I was talking about Ronald keeping family's clothes box. There's a lady here that I know actually. You know, I was talking about Ronald McDonald keeping family's clothes box. Yeah. That's big. Thanks to her. Oh, thanks to her. Yeah, she's she's awesome. Uh, she's awesome. There, there's there's the lady. Thomas. Hi. Thomas. <laughs> Madam Hasha. Yeah. And so she is uh, for the Ronald McDonald uh, keeping families together set, which is for a good cause, like we said before. Alsjeblieft. Te veel bedankt. Vrees naar de stille weer hier. Ja, maar dat is geen probleem. Goed, bedankt. Wel te zien. Vier vier kwamen Ja. Tot later, drinkt iets. So, uh, building on that previous question, what, what was missing, is there a part that is your favorite part? One that where you say, I use pretty much all my builds and I love that part because I can do so much. Well, better. it's actually the thing I was, that I dream about, you know, the, the, the one by three, one by two by two corner brick. That's my favorite. I don't know why. Really? I, 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 I love it. That, it's, that, it's that's actually a surprising answer because that's the first time ever that I heard somebody say, that specific piece because you have the Erling Briggs, of course, a lot of times, or yeah. uh, the round one by ones and so yeah, on. Yeah, no, for me, it's but that one. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because because when you, I think because I, when I was a kid, it did not exist. It, it, uh -huh. I think it came with with the introduction of the the space things, where you also the introduction of the of the grays. Yeah. Um, and I think that was the first time I ever saw that. But I never had many of them. I just didn't have many of them. 
and then all of a sudden you become an LCP and you buy them by the pallet. I mean, for some projects, <laughs> I, I, I recently bought eight, sorry guys, 80,000 of the same piece. And it's never with the corner bricks actually, but we, well, we use, I use tons of them, like for these, these guys. They're so useful to make things sturdy. Um, they're like awesomely useful. And, and, and I don't know, they're the perfect shape. If you have this big, big, big bag of those and you just get your hand in there and then you just, it's, just, it's a physical thing. I love it. I just love it. I'm, I'm not sure which <laughs> color I prefer though. That might not be that brown. Um, there I have to think. I, I, yeah. I would love more pieces in dark brown actually. You know, there is this brown. I agree. But then the dark brown. Yeah, the reddish brown and the dark brown. And the dark brown is so good for certain builds. For but hair. There, there I mean, I do a lot so of faces. Little. And I, I do a lot there of faces. Not only for hair, even if you go for more organic or natural forms. Yeah, we got trees. We're all, uh, yeah, so more dark brown, please. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we're going to send this interview to Lego. Guys, here. Parts of it. Just, IDs. Just parts of it. Use it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, with in 3D, a lot of corn stop. <laughs> stop taking. Uh, no. Coffee is a good idea. Oh, yeah. Jenny here, and she, uh, she's from California. It's 7 a.m. there. Good so, morning. Well, no, she's still not sleeping. <laughs> oh, good evening. She's <laughs> still not How do you do that? Nobody knows, but she needs coffee. I'm After pretty sure. After midnight, I have two eyes. I just go this. Yeah. Well, good look, good for you. So, um, another question that I had at one point. I. I already know the answer, but I'm still going to ask it. Are you allowed to make uh, weapon replicas? No. That's what I thought. No weapons? That's the shortest answer in this series? No. Yeah, exactly. And actually, I uh, don't think I would want to. Well, you do the Lego building, so that's your full-time job. Any activities besides that? So we already heard the company, the public speaking and so on. Anything else that you do? Because you were mentioned something about music, or yeah. Well, in my comedy shows, I also do. Uh, I, I do. I sing. Uh, there are sung parodies on whatever we feel like. I always work with Chris Dijon, my keyboard player. We've been working. I mean, he's known. He's worked for me longer than he has been married to his wife, and it's his first wife. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, for people who yeah, are yeah, yeah, but yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It, always, it's, it's a good. It's I always good have thing. to mention that. So there's there's this one song we we do, um, the Bruno Mars. I think I want to marry you. We usually do a parody of that, and and when we're in a company, go like, um, I think I want to work for you. Uh, it's always we always make uh, there's always a twist. Besides that, I, I don't have many hobbies left. So one one of my mottos is turn your passions and your hobbies into your profession. But if they're all in your profession, then you don't have any hobbies left. The last hobby I have left is that I like to learn languages. Um, but then I started to, to perform in those languages um, and that took a lot of fun out of it. <laughs> uh, well, no, but, but I had to stop at a certain point. So, um, but, but languages still is kind of a, a, a passion that is a little apart from the rest. Yeah, here's Julien as well. Uh, Julien Andrius, he's also a builder. He also does uh, architecture builds. Okay. Uh, he's an architecture student. Uh, also some amazing stuff and he's, he's as well like uh, give, give us more dark brown yeah, yeah you're so right um, if you weren't a professional builder what do you think you would be doing oh still com comedian or I probably I, of course I would still be a comedian um, it's, it's always been a passion and it's still there um, but maybe I would go more into movie stuff um, hmm. because that's one thing that I mean I've I've, 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 been, I've even been a model once. So I, I think everything in, in the, I mean, it's still Belgian, but in the celebrity thing that you can do, radio, TV, I've, I've been there. Uh, but I've not been in a movie, apart from a voiceover, I've never been in a movie. So probably I would have tried to maneuver myself into some movie work hmm. or something. Um, or, or maybe, maybe I would have been a tour guide because with all the languages and my love for traveling, I probably would would not be as not be too bad in that either, because that also involves some storytelling. As well. uh, storytelling, you have to show people. Are, the problem is, I'm I really hate negotiating, and I know in many countries, as a tour guide, you have to start. Uh, when people complain in a hotel, you have to go and negotiate and get a better deal and all that. And I think I would hate that. So, so maybe no, not. That's a, a, that's a travel. Uh, yeah, guide. well, still, still, I, I've done it once actually. Um, be sort of a tour guide, and 
everything falls on your shoulders after all. Mm. I'm getting a phone call. If that is my daughter who is watching this, then I want to know. It's not. Oh, it's actually Chris. It's the keyboard player. Hi, Chris. I'm going to have to wait for a while. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Because he, he's the guy who also made the app that, that is partly working around here. We, we have an app where you can, when you hold it in front of a painting, it will tell you how many bricks there are in there and and how many hours and what the name is of the, as the work. Oh, that's cool. And it was meant for, for the 3D objects as well. But the problem is when you scan it, lighting conditions are totally different. So in most of the 3D heads, it does not work. Um, anyway. Uh, uh, wait. Uh, is it good for him to be a Lego official, certified official, professional? Uh, wait, I missed the part. Yeah. I'm ah, or would you, are there moments where you would like to build something that you actually aren't allowed? Does it happen a lot or only occasionally? It does, why? Well, well, we start already talking about political salary, but... Yeah, well, it, it does not happen that often, you know, because um, it happens when it would be commercially interesting. Like, okay. like, this is Belgium. Belgium is a country of beer. We're not allowed to do alcohol. Of course, we have a lot of companies here that would be very interested in us building like a giant pint of beer for their, mm -hmm. for a promotion or, a, and, and we cannot do that. So commercially, that's a pity. On the other hand, I don't drink alcohol. So for me personally, it's not, not too bad, but just for the company and for, exactly. you know, paying the bills, that would be, that would be fun. Mm. So it does, it does happen. It does not happen that often. So. Back to the regular Lego sets. What was the last one that you built yourself? Was the modeler? It was, was one of the modelers, um, but I just forgot. We, I think the fire department. Mm. I think that was the last and one. So we can say that uh, the modeler is also your favorite team. Or yeah, is there they are. Team? No, no, it's definitely the modelers. Um, and I'm not going to say which ones I don't like because then I'm going to make some enemies here. And I don't want to <laughs> do Let's that. not do that. Let's, Let's not, not do, do that. that. Um, what are your favorite three colors in the Lego universe? Uh, my favorite colors in the Lego universe, three colors in the Lego universe. Oh boy, that's a hard one. Um, I know, I never, I'm never able to answer that. Yeah, well, it depends, it depends actually on what you're building in or what, what mm -hmm. the kind of project you're working on. I, I like this, uh, what is it called in Lego? It's, I think it's light royal blue. It's a kind of, you know, you have the 102 medium blue, the, the, the one that usually you use for sky is the one that is yep. used for that toilet thing there. And it's a little, it's not as bright as that light royal blue. I think it's mainly a Duplo color. But, but I, I like... You I have that. a few pieces in Lego in that Yeah, you color, do. And you actually have the, one, you have the one by one bricks now. So we're starting to use them in mosaics. Um, but there's not enough of them to, to, to really enjoy them as you should. So, so that's For one. the mosaics, is there a certain technique that you prefer? Is it uh, with the bricks, with plates, studs not on top? Uh... Well, uh, that also depends on, on what it's for. I mean, uh, there are two factors. One factor is, 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 is time. If it's a big thing and, and it has to be ready fast, then it's better to have them knobs out so that you can mm -hmm. see the knobs for the simple reason that you then can divide the work into over several per person people if you if it's like one big wall like, like what we have behind us here you have to start in the bottom and you I mean you can in theory you can like say you build the bottom half and the other one builds the top half it's, but it's but, more difficult but if you want to join the pieces together you always get a crack so that's mm -hmm. that's really not very good on the other hand Usually, I love it. I like it better when it's 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 a smooth wall, um, because I know it's then less Lego, but it gives a better resolution. Because well, you have like it's a factor two and a half or something that you improve yeah, exactly. because the pixel size is smaller, um, and and I it it becomes also a little more arty, I think in most cases. But in some cases, like the, the, the ceiling that we built, I wanted people to feel the Lego. So it, it depends, do you want them to feel, do you want the, the, the viewer, the spectator to have a Lego feeling or do you want them to have a art feeling 
I'm not saying that the Lego feeling cannot be art, but it's just a different, a different approach. Hmm. Uh, you know brick hats. Yes, I do. Do you have them yourselves, or I you don't. You have to build some, or no? We have created one together with the Belgian, um, the Belloc, the Belgian yeah. user group. Um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say that actually. Oh boy, what have I done? Oh no, well, that's 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 not out yet. No, it's not. Not at all. But anyway, um, but, but that's you haven't heard that here, people. Yeah, but it's gonna be a collector's item anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Um, but uh, personally, I'm not very much into the brick heads at all, actually. Um, but, 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 you know, it's a personal taste. It's, um, mm, I mean, that's fair. Um, then uh, there's the question, how much did I beg you to do this? I think you asked me like less than once and I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't beg. Yeah, he didn't beg at all. Uh -huh. I mean, he's just a nice guy, and if people, I mean, it's also I am an artist. I like it when people pay attention I know, to what I do. I, I abuse that completely. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're very right to do so, and you're welcome to do so. Um, um, I never, I, I don't always say yes, but but usually I do if I find time. I remember a, a kid from Tasmania. You know, Tasmania is like beyond Australia for us. Mm -hmm. And this guy wanted to do an interview for a school thing. You could say, well, you had to copy paste some. You de Most people ask the same questions. That was fun. And there was also a little guy, f I think from Arkansas, I'm not sure, from the US, same thing. And he did a video interview. Oh, cool. The guy was like between eight and 10 years. But the quality of his questions, I still remember that. I mean, he was not asking how many, well, you can ask how many bricks they use in the Rubens. But his questions were like, and what does inspire you? And what if God w would, <laughs> you know, that kind of... Whoa, like, heavy questions for such a young not guy. Not even 10 years old, and that kind of questions. I awesome. love that. Yeah, it was fantastic. So, which, uh, which actually brings us to one of the last questions. Um, what is a question that you always think, why don't they ever ask me this? Well, that question, the question is usually, what, why do you do this? The, 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 why do you build stuff with Lego? Why do you build art? It's, yeah, it's, it's, why? Uh, why do I build art? Because as most artists, I have this urge to create. So I create and my medium happens to be Lego bricks. Um, in another life, it could have been just paper and pencil or it, or, wood could, or, or it could have been used cars I don't know but in my case it's Lego bricks um, and do I want to change the world no but I love to entertain I want I love it just sitting outside our shop there and watch the faces of the people that go out and they they are most of them if not all of them they, they are in between what was this and wow this was fun and that's what I love. It's the same th thing when you do comedy. Of course, you're on stage because you want approval. But then seeing that people have enjoyed themselves, that they, that they, had a, that they just had a great time, that's fantastic. And, and that's what thrives you. Okay, Eric, I have one more question, and that is probably the most asked question of, of them all. Shame on you all. Do you have free Lego for them? For them? Yeah. Well, I can I can give away this one. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so yeah. Okay. Well, actually, according to our contract, we Who are wants not. This one? We're not allowed to give away Lego bricks. <laughs> um, so no, that's too bad. You have no idea how many times I've seen that question. We want free Lego. Ask him for free Lego. Ask. Yeah. Well, we we really can do it. No, but on the other hand, I can. So. What we always do here is uh, when I interview someone, uh, they get one of the Parky Bricks bricks. Uh, so these bricks, people. Okay. So this one's for you. Okay, thank you very much. So use it somewhere in one of your builds. I will. I always love that one they see because I also have an ego. Yeah, I, also, I know, perfectly I also understand. like my I, name out there, you I know. I can relate to that. Uh, and uh, yeah, you probably know those bricks because it's your company that makes them. No, I don't make them, I print, I print yeah, them. Yeah, you print them, of course. Yeah. So uh, yeah. 
Great. There you go. Uh, there, for me, that was all the questions. Maybe some closing statements uh, for the people that they uh, should come here. Well, always be creative. Always follow your dreams. Don't wait until they come true. Make sure that they come true your, because you work for it. And turn your passions into your profession if you can to. Don't waste your time on things that you don't want to do. That's actually solid advice. Perfect. Dirk, thank you so much for taking the time to be My here pleasure. With me. And uh, I'm going to chat a bit more with uh, people here in chat and show them around again. Yes. Okay. Some of them joined in later. All right. Okay. Thank Cheers, you very man. much. Okay. I'll get rid of this then. <laughs> Anytime. Yeah, you can. You hold. Uh,